As the world's largest and most populous continent, the cultures, topographies, and religions of Asia are abundant, nuanced, and vastly different. And yet there lie commonalities that have shaped how contemporary Asia is perceived. Countries such as Singapore, India, Vietnam, and Indonesia were once colonies of Britain, France, and the Netherlands until the mid-20th century. Beyond that lies the American interventions in Japan, Korea, and the Philippines. Much of Asia's current political and cultural environment is studied through the lens of these colonial and imperial histories. But how can we study Asia beyond its mere influence from the West? How can we look towards Asia from within her own boundaries? My name is Shadman, and welcome to the second episode of a new series by the Cultural Research Center, where we discuss all things in culture. In this episode, I speak to Prof. Chen Kuan Singh, who offers a critical framework for this precise issue in his book, Asia as Method. We kind of asked Prof. you this question in our previous interview, but I wanted to ask you as well, what is cultural research to you? There, there is really no essence to the thing called cultural research. It's kind of open space to put a cultural question. And I think a lot of these uh, cultural study work Um, somehow connected to our own immediate living environment. What are the kind of problems and tensions and conflict involved and you try to make sense of it. Mm-hmm. But the more, more you go into these analysis then you find out uh, the present actually is necessarily a result of history rather than simply uh, manifested in in contemporary terms. And how does your book, Asia's Method, kind of fit into that idea of cultural studies? Fortunate or unfortunate, the notion of Asia's Method, you know, get reduced to uh, some simplistic manner of interreferencing, but which has a larger issue at stake with intellectual history. I'll give you a simple example, right? University-based discipline were actually not out of our own invention. It is, you know, originated from the European context and cut into all the different category, uh, whereas other intellectual forms and traditions get, you know, pushed to the side. It's trying to suggest that, can we understand the world history via certain point or certain context of Asia? So this has become a kind of intellectual agenda to change the dominant frame, which has for the past century has been actually the West or Europe. All right then, so how can early scholars or people in the everyday, how can we use this lens of Asia's method to understand or react to contemporary transnational relations? So I don't have quick takeaway, so to speak, saying, oh, you can do this, you can do that. Different individual, different person might have different possibility. It really depends on your own interest, desire, and chance to open up. So if that sort of eye is not open, or the consciousness doesn't register, we simply follow the mainstream. I, I use the example, right? Everywhere, Donald Trump will be on the headline news. I'm not saying U.S. election is not important, but it's not the only thing or the most important things, you know, on Earth. So we need to develop other set of concern. So the more diversity or the more um, all these things happen to your life, slowly you can construct different system of reference, right? So it's not only on the level of research, but also on the level of life. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, a comment, or even a question, and be sure to check out our next episode as we continue to talk to more artists, academics, and activists about all things in culture.